Good evening and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James, and unfortunately, no Steve at the moment. There's a bit of a bit of a, a crisis, I think, at the moment. Uh, so Steve's going to be with us in a few minutes, I think. He's on his way anyway. So you just have myself at the moment. Good evening and welcome. It's Sunday, the 15th of April, 2018, and we have a, a packed show tonight. Loads of information, loads of things to go through. Now, um, a guest on the show is a lady called Suzanne Bartolis. And she's a QHHT practitioner. So we're going to be looking forward to speaking to Suzanne. There's a, a, there seems to be a few people out there doing this, doing the actual regression with people and speaking to higher spirits and higher energies and finding out information about what, thing, what things are going on. So we'll actually have a talk with Suzanne in a few minutes when we go through our bits and pieces. Now, yesterday we had the, the radio marathon um, well, the, the Radio Roundtable, the United We Start Roundtable, and we had uh, our guest on the roundtable yesterday was Dr. Rima LeBeau. Again, brilliant information from Dr. Rima. Um, can't complain, as usual, brilliant information on the ball, all about medical stuff that we've been talking. So very, very, very interesting. Um, but what we'll do is we'll... Uh, we let Steve just arrived in there. How are you doing, Steve? Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> I hope he has a no. Okay, before we do anything anyway, we're going to find out what the communication channels are. So let's do that. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com and People'sInternetRadio.com. <laughs> okay, yeah, the communication channels is 0469271212. That is the number for, uh, that's the phone number. If you're ringing from outside the Republic of Ireland, it's 00353 We also have the chat room on oamradio.com. <coughs> Excuse me. And a big hi to everyone already logged in there. We also monitor the chat room on peoplesinternetradio.com for your questions for a guest this evening. We also have on the website there as well, we have the usual links for the Facebook anti-social media, also the Twitter and uh, we have a, a couple of, uh, well, we have a lot of information there as well, plus old podcasts as well, if anyone needs to catch up on some of the previous shows. We also have a link for the TuneIn radio application as well. That's a free app for your smartphone or your iPhone, where you can listen to us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And also the all-important email, info at oamradio.com. If you want to drop us a line uh, during the show or during the week, just to say hi and let us know where you're tuning in from. Alan, right, okay, well listen, I'll start off and let you uh, take, a, take a breath uh, for a few minutes, okay? Um, this, was just, this was just running from the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll start off and then you can jump in, you can actually do, uh, do, my, do my bit. Right, okay, uh, just a couple of things as usual before we bring the guest in, as you know. Uh, the Independent.ie, um, the Independent said that new laws to make it easier to sack civil servants, well that's a step in the right direction anyway, because for, I don't know whether you know, but when you're like a, a public servant, you work for the um, the, the public sector. Um, if it, uh, uh, an employee is a bad employee, what the deal is, so I've been told anyway, is that you know that you have to pay them up to their retirement um, age, regardless of what age they are. That's the deal. Um, but it's very hard to get rid of a public sector worker, even if they are incompetent and doing the wrong things. That's what they always say, isn't it? Job for life in the civil service. Job for life, yeah. yeah, exactly. And there's all kinds of people that go in there knowing that, knowing that they can muck about and not do a real job because it's hard to sack them. So um, it says new laws to make it easier to sack civil servants are to be drawn up after years of promises. Finance Minister Pascal Donoghue is to reform the process for disciplinary actions, dismissals and appeals in the civil service. Fewer than 100 workers were actually dismissed from the civil service between 2008 and 2016. And I'll tell you now, there's probably a lot of people in there that should be sacked. We're looking at the state of the roads anyway. I'll tell um, you, they're they're if, they, if they were to do with Donald Trump and you know get rid of a lot of the corrupt and the, the, the dead wood in the civil servants, uh, they really would be draining the swamp. They would be, definitely. Somebody needs to go in there and do it. In 2014, the Secretary General of the Department of Public Expenditure, Robert Watt, admitted the process under which we can exit people um, is too 
burdensome. There's too many steps. So there's too many processes in the steps at the moment trying to get rid of people. They should uh, streamline that. I think all people should be assessed in their jobs, really. I mean, looking at the state of the roads and the, the quality of the work that's done, I mean, to be honest with you, if I was in there, they'd be sacked. Yeah. You know, I'm simple as that. So. They'd yeah. be sacked. End of story. And, you know, um, if you're incompetent, you can't do your job, then you're, you're sacked. End of story. Um, Steve, number two. Yeah, number two. Uh, sad news, this one is that Art Bell uh, has, has recently passed away at the age of 72. Art was an American broadcaster and author. Uh, he was the founder of the original, uh, founder and the original host of the paranormal themed radio program on Coast to Coast AM, which was syndicated on hundreds of radio stations in the US and Canada. That's quite sad news because he was kind of one of the, he was, he was one of the big players as well, you know, and, and everyone, everybody knew Art Bell. So, um, I, I remember, news. I remember in the uh, 90s, I had a laptop and I was dial in, right? And oh, yeah. I used to dial in and listen to Coast to Coast with wow. Art Bell. And, you know, he was one of the pioneers. He yeah. really was one of the pioneers from a radio point of view. And last year we did talk to Art and we tried to get him on the show. But because of scheduling problems with Air Show and his show, which went out at the same, near enough the same time, um, and he had stuff to do, we never got around to actually getting him on. Um, it would have been great to have him on and have a show in the bag, but look, it's just the way it is anyway. Right, um, right. Uh, next thing on the list is the Irish Mirror.ie. In the Irish Mirror, it said, University Hospital Galway hid a trolley patients for Taoiseach Leo Vradker's visit. Now, Taoiseach is our Prime Minister over here in Ireland, and Leo Vradker is our Prime Minister at the moment. Um, the hospital managed to reduce the numbers of patients by reopening a closed ward in advance of the Taoiseach's visit. A hospital has been blasted for hiding patients when the Taoiseach visited to minimise the scale of its overcrowding crisis. Fianna Fáil's uh, Shannon Health Spokesman and Family GP Keith Swanick said the massaging of figures and moving patients to inappropriate areas to mask the extent of the problem was worrying and dangerous. Now, I said, um, trolley watch figures from the Irish Nurses and Midwife Organisation show the numbers waiting on trolleys at the University Hospital Galway fell from 58 on Wednesday to 26 on Thursday, the day Leo Radker came to the town. Numbers crept up to 36 on Friday. Again, you know, it's amazing when, you know, somebody's coming, what they can do, open up a ward because Leo's coming down. It's farcical, it really is, and I pity anybody that's actually in hospital uh, waiting on a trolley. Now, there is a man, they reported the man dead, actually, in hospital, um, and I, I don't have this full story, I've just seen it in passing, so maybe it's something that we'll do next week, but um, that's frightening if a man is found dead waiting in the hospital um, to, be, uh, to be assessed. Uh, unbelievable. And you're taking the last one? Yes, uh, some uh, news in from the sun.ie. It says staggering figures. Uh, 30 Garda superintendents across Ireland currently under investigation by GSOC as the AGS president uh, voices concern. It says the number of, the number was revealed by Superintendent Noel Cunningham at the Association Garda of Super the Association of Garda Superintendents 31st Annual Conference in County Kildare and that happened today it says that's very concerning so they're all under investigation and guess who's going to investigate them uh, well I'm, I'll, I'll take a stab back and say that it'll be kind of an internal thing they'll investigate themselves and Bang on. You know, nothing will ever happen no yeah. prize for that yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's investigate ourselves yeah. and see how bad we are you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, okay. That's like a cr- one crook investigating another crook, you mm-hmm. know? Um, how's your week, apart from your mad dash? Ah, uh, me, well, me, me mad dash, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll fill we, you, We'll fill talk about that later, later yeah. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the week's been very busy, I have to say. I've been on my own and work this week and uh, really up to my uh, proverbials. But uh, there's not really too much to report, with the exception that I had a knock on the door yesterday. I don't know if they're doing their rounds in your area, but uh, I had a knock on the door yesterday. And uh, you know, sometimes when you're, you're not feeling lonely and you're just not in the mood of talking, I was actually washing up after dinner. And uh, yeah, so I had my marigolds on, the sink full of suds, and a uh, tea towel slung over my shoulder. Mm. You get the picture. Mm. And uh, there was a knock at the door. I kind of glanced out, and I could see a figure, uh, an outline of a male at the door. Now, I didn't know who it was, and mm. I wasn't feeling particularly uh, lonely, so I decided ah, I'll leave him be, sure. He'll, uh, he'll stand there for a few minutes and he'll, he'll, he'll leave. Um, and he did. 
of course, when I was finished doing the washing up, then there was uh, some stuff, uh, some paraphernalia left in the hall, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show Alan the picture here now at the moment, but uh, it, it's basically. There, there, there's the image. If I can, I won't be able to do it during the show, but uh, I'll try and get the image scanned and I will pop it up on the OAM Facebook page during the week. But basically, it's uh, some people, they're going to be in Kinnegad, or not in Kinnegad, sorry, in uh, Kintork, uh, in Castle Pollard, uh, over the next week here, and that's uh, in County Westmead. And uh, they're going to be kind of obviously quoting the scriptures from the Bible and letting us know uh, where we're going wrong in our lives. But basically, they, they have some information here. I've just handed it to Alan. He's looking at a map, and on the map, it basically says, you know, it's one of these like you would see in a supermarket, where it says, you are here. And over to the, let's say, to the left is salvation, and over to the right is damnation, and hell, and fire, and brimstone. And, and it basically says, you are here. And we're kind of near the fire and brimstone. It says, after, like, where we are here, the next step is death, and after that, we're going to hell. Unless... Unless we redeem ourselves now and we go to this meeting in uh, Kintork, as I say, in Castle Pollard, in County Westmead, uh, Jordan the Week, and we redeem ourselves. And uh, Now, I would have liked him to actually have a chat. You'd love to chat with this guy, I, I would imagine. Um, but I just wanted to kind of uh, so the last, it out there. The last couple of Jehovah's Witness down knocked on my door ran away. <laughs> <laughs> and right, these are, and they won't, they vowed never to come back. Actually, I think several of them have left. Yeah, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. I thought I'm um, knocking their belief system, but you know when they start putting holes in it, you know they kind of go, "Okay, this guy, <laughs> we better walk away." Yeah, yeah, you yeah know. No. And uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, even even this one here, they they have a website, and I'll put up a link to the website there. I actually went on just to see kind of what they were all about and who's running the, who's running the show, and um, it seems to be a legitimate organisation, and. Uh, but the whole leaflet, all the literature, is just riddled with passages from the Bible, and it, it basically is just telling you you are you're on the road to damnation, and that's it. Are we? we are. We're halfway there. Well, mind you, that's why they have a stairway to heaven and a highway to hell. That's right. That's right. They're, they're allowing for numbers there, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what they're saying. They're saying that the, the, the path to, to heaven and righteousness is a is a, it's a narrow road, and only some people will go. Uh, but basically, yeah, we're all kind of damnation. We're all damned. And they're, uh, when you look go onto, go onto the website, there was a video. Not but just. I just want to say, I'm not knocking these people. I'm not knocking them, but I don't go knocking on anyone else's door preaching. I don't preach to anyone. As far as I know, as far as I can say, we're all on a journey. We are. We're all on a journey. And how we get there is our own concern. Um, but they they have a video on the website. And on the video, basically, it says, our religion is far superior. I'm not paraphrasing now. Our religion is far, far superior than any of the others. We know there's more out there. Um, but ours is far superior because all the others are basically saying you need to save yourself. Ours is saying we have a saviour who will save you. So that's why ours is far superior. So give away your power. That's you know, it, yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah. Mm. So the, the, there's an 11 minute video. And if you watch it, like it's informative and you know there's a few bits of information where you'll kind of go, oh, okay, yeah, you will agree with it, you know. But then you kind of get to this bit where, you know, you're all damned and the saviour and you must dedicate and donate, not donate, but. Uh, um, you know, you have to kind of put your life to, to in, in trust of Jesus Christ. Now, I mean, you know, there, there are other religions who kind of go, well, no, my religion says this, that, and the other. But, uh, yeah, it was just interesting to, to read. I actually read it over breakfast this morning. I read it over breakfast while oh, <laughs> sitting, I'm glad on, you had a good sitting on the lounge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, while eating the bowl of cornflakes. I'm not endorsing cornflakes. But, but um, yeah, so I'll actually put up a link. I will. On, well, I have it scanned. That's just a scanned copy if Alan, if Alan wants it. But I do have a scanned copy. I will put the links up on the, the OAM Facebook page. Uh, either when I go home or I'll do it tomorrow for anyone to have a look. If, if you're interested, if you feel that you need to be saved. And there you go. That's, that's it. How's your week? Okay, well, just before we bring Suzanne in, um, just one thing I want to talk about. Now, um, Facebook are, seem to be up to their tricks again, and I'm a bit annoyed at Facebook. Um, the last few posts I have put up, mind you, I am blaming Facebook, but it could be that I'm normal, normal, normal no mates, you know? Um, could be. Could be. Um, but on my personal Facebook account, um, they, uh, they seem to have disabled my news feed going into other people's news, f- news feed for some reason. I mean, that's what it looks like anyway. Because over the last few posts that I put up, not one person has clicked on it a like. Now, that wasn't the case a while ago, and all of a sudden, it's now the case. So, it looks like the only way you're going to see my the stuff I post up on my personal Facebook is to actually go to my page and see it. 
Um, now, as I say, I'm assuming that people do click. Well, they, we, I know they do click because they have done in the past. Um, so I think Facebook, what they've done is they've stopped my news feed because the stuff I post up is all kind of educational and exposing stuff, as you know. Um, so on my private Facebook account. So if any of, any of you have um, a link on my private Facebook account, I'd be curious to if you can let me know or if you can see it when any of the stuff I post up, if it comes up. Because um, for some reason, well, I won't say for some reason, we know what Facebook are doing, you know. I mean, it's everybody's going through the same process. Everybody's well, saying the same thing. Did you see Mr. Zuckerberg? He was on, well, he wasn't on Troy, but he was being questioned during the week. Have you seen any of those? Um, I haven't really watched it, you know. It's just I've seen the one where the, the guy says, well, you know, can you tell us what hotel you're staying in? And he goes, well, no. You know, like it's private yeah. information. He goes, but you can take air information it, and yeah. sell it off. Yeah, no, he was even inter- introduced by, or interviewed by one of these congresswomen. And uh, every every question she asked him, he kind of, he didn't want to give the answer. He kind of, you know, he was kind of go, trying to go a roundabout way of not answering the question. And she said, I've only got four minutes. I've got four minutes in which I, have to, I, have to, I can question you, she says. Uh, you need to stop doing this. You need to answer the question. So I'm going to ask you yes or no questions. Yeah. <laughs> and she started asking him, like, uh, yes or no questions, you know, um, of all the data that was collected by by uh, this Cambridge Analytics for, Analytica place, uh, and she was asking them yes or no questions. And he, well, well, I can't really say yes or no. Well, you need to give me a yes or no. You know, she was very direct. Yeah. And um, uh, when you seen him, he he looked like a schoolboy being interviewed by a principal. <laughs> oh, he had a little uh, booster chair seat there as well, he didn't did. he? Bless him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. D- uh, unbelievable. Anyway, so look, if you d- so they're affecting my timeline. When I'm posting stuff up, it's not there. Now, I'm going to have to have a look at MeWe as an option and move away from Facebook like a lot of people are doing maybe because it's just not working. You know, um, that kind of control over the alt media and everything else. You know what's happening with that. So we're going to have to look at alternatives and that's what we'll do. Right. Okay. We're going to bring in our guest. But before we do that, Steve's going to give us a read of her bio and give us some background information. Yes. Our guest this evening is Suzanne Bertolis. Uh, Suzanne was born in Northern England and emigrated to Canada uh, with her family at the age of two. She now resides in Cambridge, Ontario with her husband, Robert. Uh, Suzanne's mission to help others during their spiritual awakening allows her to tap into her many creative and metaphysical abilities using each and every one of her skills as guided by her angelic healing team. Uh, By doing this, she helps others to go within to examine hidden truths, release blocks and old energetic patterns so they can move ahead head in a positive healthy and happy manner uh, Suzanne works with a vast amount of helpers from the highest <coughs> highest light uh, during healing sessions and she works very closely with Jesus the council of nine angels uh, archangels and Arturians yeah and that's it is, uh, is this that's hey, more. Oh, oh this is more yeah. I do apologize sorry yes, sorry yes, um the recent message of humanity was a reminder to remember truths, release restrictions and to reach a new reality. Uh, now is the time while the energies are rising for people to truly embrace who they are, uh, divine beings of light and to stop, step into every role they came here to play. In order to do that, a lot of healing still needs to take place. Suzanne, along with her husband, Robert, are the owners of White Dragonfly Healing. Uh, Together they have done a lot of work to help humanity on so many levels, raising awareness for those who live with MS or other ailments or life restrictions of any sort. Uh, Suzanne is author of three books, a singer-songwriter and musician, artist and intuitive healer. Uh, She is a certified QHHT practitioner and quantum soul healing facilitator. Uh, She's also certified Holy Fire 2 Reiki master teacher uh, who works directly with the angelic realm in her sessions and we will actually pop up a link to Suzanne's website during the show. Boy I bet that keeps Suzanne busy. Good evening Suzanne, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing? Not too bad. Thank you uh, for coming on the show. That, uh, all that information there obviously keeps you very busy. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm busy all the time actually. Um, but it's nice because I work for myself so I can schedule time off when I feel I need it. That's great. And, uh, which is quite often. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I, I bet you're probably being inundated. The QHHT um, mm-hmm. practitioner seems to be inundated by um, a lot of people now because there's a lot of it on the internet. And as, as I said, before we went live, we had Alba Wyman on the show um, last year. And yeah. we had great information from Alba talking about you know her sessions that she's done. 
And I know you do a lot, an awful lot of sessions, and the idea is to, you know, have a talk with you and find out, you know, through your sessions what information you're getting, because what we are hearing an awful lot of it, uh, about the energy changes. And just before, earlier today, uh, funny enough, I was watching Dolores Cannon, and she was oh, yeah. talking about the, she was talking about the new earth and all that kind of stuff. So I was just kind of getting a heads up on that. And I've I've watched it before, and I've watched a few other people talk about it. And um, but the, you know, there's a lot of you know, like I know uh, we also quickly talked about Alison Kyo, who um, is well known, obviously on the internet as well for QHHT, and she yeah. said, "Oh, it's going to be in the fourth quarter of this year." And then everybody was saying, "Well, they haven't felt anything," and it, you know, what's that all about? And then she came out and did a video saying she learned a lesson never to give a timeline, um, <laughs> because. Obviously, uh, we're in the three D. We're in the three D dimension, and yes. t- time is something that's um, that we have in three D. That's formulated by man. In uh, on the five D dimension, there's no such thing as time. So, for spirit or for energies or for whoever on the five D to give us time is very difficult because they've no sense of time. They've no time. You know, time. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Time is a three D concept. That's right. Oh, so I think somebody's trying to stop me talking. Oh, um, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, somebody's trying to do something there. Um, so, so obviously, you know, when people ask for when is this going to happen, um, it's very, very hard to kind of get an answer. Now, what sometimes the the five D spirits do, or the energies do, is say, right, okay, I can give you a time, but when this happens on the planet, that's going to be near. When it's going to happen. That's the other thing that they do. But I'm no expert in QHHT and I've never regressed anybody. I've never done it. Hence why we speak to people like yourself. So let's start off with, um, because I'm sure people want to know, after what was said about the incoming energies. Now there are people saying they're feeling it. And there are people, there's all different kind of symptoms. The one thing that I'm noticing is I see a lot of people not well. They're sick Mm -hmm. and people dying, passing over. Even today I got a text in saying a chap I know, his wife passed away today. Um, And so people are passing over. Now, is this a coincidence or is there something that you can shed light on and just give us some information as to what really is going on? What do you think is going on? Um, Well, first of all, I'm going to say I'm not God, so I don't have all the answers. Um, You know, I just feel people are reading too much into this, into the events and the timelines. You know, Alison Coe and and Alba, I love both of those women. I watch, you know, watch some of their videos and um, pay attention to what they're getting to compare it to what I'm getting. Um, But what people need to understand is we're not giving the information. We're passing along information that Mm. we receive from somebody else's higher self. You know, Mm. and that higher self can be more than just one aspect of that person. It can be a whole collective from the highest consciousness. There's different levels you reach when you put a person um, into hypnosis, you know. Yeah. And I what I'm finding in some of my sessions is depending on how spiritually evolved my clients are determines how much information I get from their higher self. And a lot of times it's along the same line as what they already understand as as who they are as a, in the third dimension. Okay. You know, so if they feel like the earth is going to shift and it's going to be, um, you know, there's going to be cataclysms and all these things, then the higher self a lot of times comes through with the same information. That's what I'm finding. <clears throat> okay. So it de- depends where their, 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 their head is at, so to speak. Um, right. And now the, we've just well, had I a, find that. Yeah. Okay. We've just had a, a quick question. Um, yeah. What is QHHT? So if you want to um, just, if one of our listeners wanted to know, yeah, of course, we, we said it, actually uh, explaining what it is. So if you want to just yeah. give a, a brief uh, introduction to that. Sure. Quantum healing hypnosis technique is QHHT. Um, and it was developed by Dolores Cannon close to 50 years ago now, or 45 to 50 years ago. And it's a form of past life regression where um, you take the client into the deepest state that you possibly can, which is the somnambulistic state. So it's that moment just before you fall asleep and just before you wake up. So everybody naturally goes there twice a day. Now, depending on how busy the person's mind is when you're putting them into hypnosis, um, Generally, it's not a problem getting them into that state. 
And when they're there, that's when they're able to access their their higher self and um, be able to see visually through the veil or hear or just have that deep sense of knowing. So it's a little bit deeper than um, regular hypnosis. I'm not a hypnosis specialist. I'm going to spit that out right now. I took my quantum healing um, training near the end of summer last year because I was being pushed by my own team. And my team is the angels I work with on the other side. Um, and my guidance, and I, I paid attention to it. it. Took me a couple of years to actually take the course, and they had to scream at me at the end um, to do it. But um, you know, I I stepped into it for a different reason, is what I'm seeing now. I mean, I initially went into it to be able to do um, you know the hypnosis and help people reach their higher self. But what's happening with me is they're shifting me into I call it quantum soul healing. So they're incorporating my abilities that I have to see through the veil, um, my healing abilities that I have with Reiki, um, and all my, all my abilities that I have, they're, they're combining them into the session. So quite often, um, my clients don't go into a past life. I mean, sometimes they do. It depends, um, what their, their situation is in this lifetime that they're trying to, um, work on and, and resolve, right? That's what the higher self takes you to a past life that mirrors what you're going through now. Mm. And then um, the person watches the scenario. We take them through the life. We pass them over to the other side so they can look back over the life. And when we talk with the higher self about the um, the past life that they've had, and the person is consciously aware and can hear this, um, when we find out what the lesson was and if they've learned the lesson and if they need to you know, continue to carry that with them, it's like a little switch goes off in the brain and they're able to release any trauma or any emotional blocks that they've carried through from like from that past life, which could have been 600 years ago, you know, it stays with you in your DNA. That's my understanding anyway. Yeah. You know, that once you get there, you can release that trauma. Okay. And as you said, just uh, before we went into the, uh, the explanation on the QHHT, that depending on the person's spiritual development will depend on the information that comes through from yeah. the higher self. That's what I find. Yes, I find that if a person is really caught up on, um, uh, how can, let me see, I have to think. I've done so many sessions and they, they tend to take away or not let me retain everything. So um, if somebody feels like um, the new earth is in 5D, they're going to have no conflicts and no um, there's going to be no pain and no suffering, then that's what the higher self is going to kind of bring through it the session as well like the people have to come with questions the first question generally is what my what's my purpose and then when is this event happening right if that person already feels like the event is going to happen like many did in the first quarter okay Mm. many were getting caught in that um concept that it was going to happen in the first quarter of this year um then when we ask that question that's kind of what filters through from their higher self because they've heard it so many times. It's almost like they've got it planted in their brain and that part of them comes through. It's, it's hard to explain. Like, um, well, that I'll, I'll share, I'll share one session with yeah. you. Okay. Just to, and if people see my videos on there and they want to know about the event, um, episode 33, I did with my friend, Eva, who's one of my Reiki students. Um, and we actually reached the Elohim, which is, the highest creation that God, you know, the first creation that God uh, created, I guess. And they came forward and they were the creator beings on the planet and kind of made everything happen here, right? Well, we got to the highest level with the Elohim. And they didn't even know when this event was. They're like right below creator. And they don't even know. So how can we know? Or how can anybody else's higher self or collective know if creator is not telling his his first ones that he made? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that, that makes sense. I mean, they, 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 don't they say in the Bible, I'm not one for quoting the Bible, but it doesn't say people won't know the time or the date when something's going to happen. Now, I'm not talking about the That's rapture, right. because that, the rapture's all doom and gloom and everything else. But, um, yeah, so if he's keeping uh, the, these cards close to his chest or her chest, uh, yeah. depending on, on what's gonna, if this event's going to happen now, Dolores Cannon is was kind of saying, well, it's really an individual thing, and it's not a case that we'll be physically right. changing or going off to a new planet. It's more probably of a, a conscious level of change. And, you know, that's great if individually people are waking up over a period of time. 
mm-hmm. and the energy is helping to do that. But you're talking probably about, uh, and this is my guess being kind of logical, probably two or three hundred years before you get to the stage where most people are kind of woke up and they kind of got the picture. Unless, of course, the, these energies are part of accelerating this waking up process. Now, and uh, I believe they are, and they are very strong. For those of us that feel the energies, hmm. these waves have been coming, and I'm basing it on <laughs> something that started happening with me about three years ago. Uh, having vertigo and head spins and headaches, um, not all the time, but kind of come in, came, came in waves over the years. Um, and the more that happened, the more I got used to it. So now it's not quite as bad, but I still have those issues. And a lot of people do. But these waves are coming in. Yeah. You know, and it is, it's going to get to one, obviously, like a tsunami, you know, and then it's got to start to recede. But when that is, you know, nobody knows. But I, be- I, I believe what you're saying, that it's an individual um, experience that everybody goes through. And is it, the, is it the fact that the people who are getting sick are dying are just people? Because, you know, let's expand this a bit. You know, we always okay. talk about, with other guests that we've had on, that in the world there are organic people and synthetic people. And only one third of the population are, are organic and the rest are synthetic. All right. I've never heard that. Right. Okay. Well, that's that's a that's an interview in itself and a conversation. But basically, um, the the synthetic people are people that are like clones. All right. Oh yeah, clones. I've heard of them. Cloning. They've they've had cloning technology for a very very long time. All right. They've mm-hmm. been doing this, and that's a given. So the organic uh, people are um, are people who are. Um, are in in tune with the earth and are vibrating on the proper frequency. Now, if you look at it, the way the numbers kind of work, because there is this talk about people going over to the new earth, and Mm -hmm. um, we've we've talked about that before on the show. So, but if you think about this, right, so you have one third of the population are are organic, and then you have one third of that one third are, are kind of aware of what's going on, and then you have one third of that one third of that one third, which are also self-aware from a spiritual point of view. Because yeah. there's, there's people that are aware that are going on, but they don't get the picture. They're still materialistic and they're still into right. like and you know, all that kind of stuff. So you might be aware that about the Illuminata or the Cabal or the whatever, but it doesn't mean that they're they're different people. Like they're still kind of I want, I want, I want. They're in this materialistic world right. where mm-hmm. the people who are kind of self-aware say, "Well, I'm a spiritual person and I know I'm service to others and not service to self, and my right. ego is intact and I don't have an ego." Or I control my ego. So that's a very, very small group of people on the planet at this, yeah. at this moment in time. So if the awakening has to happen at a stage where 80% of the one-third, the original one-third of organics, or maybe one-third of the population completely have to wake up, that's going to take a period of time. Yeah, it will. And what people need to remember is that everybody's on their own individual path, you know? every time we incarnate into the planet or onto the planet, we're here for to learn lessons. We're here to understand new things, right? Mm. So a lot of these people that are, they kind of know, but they don't want to know. They're the ones that say it's too much work for me to try and change things. I'm just going to keep going the way it is because it's easier for me to do that, right? Yeah. Then there's their children that are waking up going, oh, my God. Why can't you see this? It's right in front of you. Can't you see the corruption and all this, right? And then you've got the new children coming in that just are so far ahead of us. It's crazy. (laughs) Exactly. They already know everything. Well, well, they've come in. They're born with the DNA upgrades and they're ready to go. That's um, right. It's it's us that's uh, kind of you know have to kind of t- hit, take the energies. Now, as I say, um, Dolores Cannon, funny enough, said it in her interview in 2012 about people being sick. He said she mm-hmm. said, "Have you noticed a lot of people getting sick?" And um, maybe they're just people that are not dealing with the energies um, properly. Now, I, I knew I was giving the chemtrails. <laughs> well, look, there's a lot of that. I mean, we know yeah. we know the food is poisoned anyway. Yeah. So we you know add in the chemtrails and the the, the, the 5G, which we briefly yeah. talked about, and everything else around us. I mean, the air, the air trying to kill us. It's gas when you say this to people and you go, yeah, you would think they were trying to kill us, and you think, well, the air and trying are. to kill us. <laughs> um, Steve, do you want to jump in there and have anything that we're saying talking about? 
Um, he's, he's, got, he's got his breath back now, so he's okay. Ah, yeah, and that large, <laughs> that, that, that large uh, Bacardi breeze that you had to be there. That's uh, it. Thanks very much. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, look, uh, we all know, we, well, we think we know what's going on in the world, and yeah, uh, we kind of, from doing this show, Suzanne, and probably from, from what you do in, in, in your line of work as well, we probably feel that we are a little bit more illuminated uh, mm-hmm. than the average Joe. And unfortunately, sometimes when you try to instill this information or even just give this information you know, and, and pass it on to, to the average Joe, they don't want to know and, and it, can be no. so, it can be so frustrating. And it gets mm-hmm. to the stage, with, with, I'm sure it gets it to everyone, where, where you're kind of thinking... What's the point of me carrying on? You know, I'm I'm doing my best to try and save people. You know, like a, I'm not. Now, uh, this is not meant in any derogatory sense, but kind of like a modern day Jesus, even a, a diet Jesus, Jesus light or something. You know, <laughs> whereby whereby you you have the information and you can see where you can see where it's all going to end up, and you want to educate people because you want to try and save them. You're not you're not being a savior, but you want to try and save people, and then they kind of have this real. I don't want to be saved, that child. You know. Yeah. Well, it's not so much. It's, well, yeah. I mean, I was. Going I want to say it's not so much saved, but yeah, I suppose if they're, they're, well, is, they're really. having poisons and everything else, yeah. you do want to save them and not for them to be sick or anything. I kind of make sense. But you can only tell them. You can only tell them so much, and then you've got it. Well, you've done your best to try. We're not here to save everybody. No, we're here to walk our path and do the best we can and come from the heart. That's what we're supposed to do. Do the job. We're, do the job we're supposed to do. Show them the door, right. but they have to walk through it, as they say. It's the old cliche. Now, this higher self spiritual thing, I do have a little bit of an issue with it, and and I think you're spot on when you said that about depending on the person who you regress will depend on the information that comes through the higher self. And yep. The, what, I'm going, what I'm about to say is a bit controversial, but it's only because we were um, given the information. Now, the reason why I say this is because um, I did see an interview, and I know you can't speak for Alison Kyo, and that's fine, I understand that. But here's, here's my kind of query. Um, Alison, I was watching an interview that Alison did, and she did an interview with a lady called Lisa Harrison. And Alison said... Um, oh yes, um, I got my higher self said that I, I should do an interview with you, Lisa. You know, and and that's fine. But we got information through uh, Thomas Williams from the Truth, Honor, and Integrity, who has good contact information and good intel, um, and his intel has been spot on. And basically, we found out that Lisa has been was involved in that um, the scam, the RIP, and the public and um, ripping people off on the OPPT. Um, to sign over all your trust funds, birth certificates to them, um, and another lady called Heather Jarriff, um, Stift Hoare, and Dan McKenney, um, who's a, a Langley agent with the CIA. And then Lisa is linked with Duncan Rhodes, who runs Nexus magazine, um, as far as we know, and works for Point Gap Group Australia Area 51 as disinfo agent. He came in to attack um, Thomas and Randy when... Um, there was an outcry over Corey Good. Um, Lisa is also well known in community now for stealing others' material and presenting it as her own. Now, I know you probably don't know this lady, and it's irrelevant. Don't worry about that. But my concern here is that if we we kind of rely on our higher self to give us good, pure information, I can't understand that if Lisa is, you know, if these these issues are going on with Lisa Harrison why Alison's higher self kind of didn't know this and suggested that she should do an infant interview with Lisa. You know, so this is why I kind of question the whole higher self thing, where the information is coming from. Well, I would say to that, I don't know any of the people you mentioned except for Alison. Yeah. <laughs> and I've worked with enough. I am very connected to my own higher self. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I don't know um, at the time why they want me to do an interview or why they want me to talk to a certain person. If Allison's higher self wanted her to talk to this woman, then there's a very good reason why that nobody may know. The mm. way that everything is connected and synchronicities and mm. um, maybe if there's corruption with these other people, maybe that needed to come forward because Allison did the interview. Yeah. No, but you're telling me now, so now I know. Yeah, but yeah. If Allison hadn't done it, then nobody would know. Do you know? Yeah, but yeah. I don't know these people, so I'm not... No that's, fair, that, no, that's fair enough, I, and I completely understand that. Um, I did listen to the interview, and there was nothing out of the ordinary. The interview was yeah. nothing out of the ordinary, so there, was, there wasn't anything there that I felt that was, you know, uh, mind-blowing. 
Um, but this is why kind of because you know myself and Steve are spiritual guys as well, and um, I've been I've been involved in the spiritual uh, side of things for since about two thousand and four. I got involved in there, and I had my kind of awakening around that time as well. Um, yeah, well, me too, actually. Yeah, well, I, I, it was actually 2001 when I started getting into this, and it was when the penny dropped in around 2004, 2005, that, yeah. uh, that's when it really, like, hit home, you know? Um, and, but I found that the spiritual side, you know, understanding energies and the manipulation of energies and all that was the, the positive side to making the change and making the difference. Um, and I thought, you know, and that's when I kind of got into the spiritual side. But what else is coming through on your sessions with the people that you've regressed? What other things have have they been saying? And is there anything that they've said that you've you've kind of confirmed that that is happening or has happened? Well, what you know, you mentioned before about the new earth. OK, um, there was an episode I did. I think it's 26 with a, a young guy called Zach and he had a. a a two billion year old archangel that came through. And this was kind of when they started to shift me. Okay. Um, so that we're, we're actually talking to either an angel, a higher self, Jesus, a passed over family member, somebody on the other side. And the client is also very aware. And it's almost like a three way conversation going on. This is kind of how they're shifting me a bit. But what I wanted to say was, uh, I had asked this archangel because he was talking about new earth or we were talking about it. And he was saying that people would start to see a visual change, hmm. you know, like the world, the world would start to look different. Um, like as if you went from the old tube television to high definition, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of difference. And I had brought something up to him and said, well, there was one day when I walked my dog by the river and um, it had rained and I walked along this path, and when I turned to come back along the river with all the, there was like brush and trees along the riverbank, everything illuminated. It looked like a power washer had just gone through there, and it wasn't from the rain. It was like the colors were so vibrant. Mm. And I felt like I stepped into like a bubble, like I had stepped inside a bubble, and everything was glossy and beautiful, and qu it was peaceful and quiet, and I stood there for about five minutes trying not to move. Because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was that amazing compared to the colors that we see here. Mm. And I asked him about that, this archangel, and I told him about that. And he said, that is what we're talking about. Once you start to embody the 5D energies, the frequency is higher and, the, and everything shifts into that higher frequency. So colors are more vibrant. There's less negativity. There's like negativity can't survive in a higher vibration mm. it just gets uncomfortable and the more awake you become the more you realize yourself you guys probably that you can't be around people that are negative oh you yeah can't get yeah. pulled into drama like that's just bullshit yeah, you don't want to yeah. be around it yeah you know? exactly oh no we just uh, completely stay away from it i, yeah, I don't do I. don't entertain it at all i just stay away no. from it i'm not interested and steve you you said the same there oh yeah i'm well, completely i completely concur with that yeah Right. Well, in regards to the 5D, that's what people have got to start looking for, you know, start noticing things. Start, and, and nature is a great way to start by looking, you know, um, when you're on your walks and things like that. But when you do raise your frequency and you start getting rid of the negative attitudes and the low vibrations and the blocks that you're holding, everything does shift. You know, you're either a happy person or you're not. Yeah. Right. And when you're happy, everything seems better. And that's where quantum healing comes in because it truly does. It's a modality that helps you understand what's keeping you blocked. The, the, the people that come to me are sitting on a fence. The majority of them are women, but I get a, a lot of men as well. And they don't know why they can't move forward. And it's when we have the session, um, we either take them to the past life or how they're shifting me now is we do some deep molecular healing so the white we're like healing them in the white light so because of because of my ability to see through the veil when i'm able to they show me where they are on the client i can see the energy around a specific body part or you know i feel it or you know and i can bring awareness to that for the client and they'll say well but yeah i have trauma in that area or i broke my hip or my foot got you know uh, i had a problem with that so they're almost bringing the client into understanding that as well, how how they're fixing it. Can you, you know, clear that thoughts, energy? Can you Do you clear that energy? I stand at the foot of the bed now. This is what they're getting me to do. 
And the session I'm going to post today, I haven't uh, haven't got it up yet, but this woman, when I stood at the end of the bed, they were telling me that she was blocked in the in the um, the heart chakra was really heavy, and I could kind of envision like a metal plate over it. It was so dense, and they were telling her it needs to move through. And I, I'm still learning how to work with them in respect to this, so I didn't understand right away. But then, as soon as I moved to her feet and 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 you know put my hands on her feet, the energy shot through her because I have a very high frequency because I've been doing this for a long time. And it just, it boosted her and allowed that block to free up. And it rushed through her like a water hose when you unkink it. Mm. So, you know, that's kind of how it's uh, it's changing for me. The healing is the big part of it. It's not so much about the past life part for me. Do you, you, know? did you, have, do you have any sessions where you have a eureka moment with a client where they will go in skeptical and then come out converted? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> You're not going to get me under. Yeah. Yeah. The, I had one guy, he was under for three hours and he says right on the tape, well, now I believe it. Like, you know, he didn't think I'd get him under. He was a great, great client. He drove here for like 10 hours or something to wow. get here for a session. And uh, yeah, I have many. My husband's a good example. Italian businessman. It took me, you know, four times to really get him into a deep, deep trance. The third and fourth session were quite phenomenal, actually. And, you know. uh, and I've heard, I mean, again, listening to Dolores Cannon and other QHHT people, that if people go in there with the mindset, I'm not going to be hypnotized, I'm not going to be hypnotized, chances are they probably won't be. So it'll be a wasted your time and their time. Well, it depends. Um, it depends how good you are at what you're doing, you know, mm. um, and how the interview process goes. Like we talk for a couple of hours before we even do the session. So a lot of their insecurities and their apprehension is gone, you know, yeah. because they start to open up about why they're really there. You know, I don't think people are going to spend the kind of money they, they spend and drive for hours or fly like they do for Alba <laughs> across the continent, you know, and be apprehensive about it or, or not believe it. Yeah. You know, but there are some like that. Right, okay. That's, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Steve, you've got a couple of questions there for Suzanne. We do have a couple of questions. Um, where we go? Um, the f- well, the first question I have, I have re- I, I jotted it down myself, Suzanne. Um, okay. When you, has there ever been a case, I, I, but you, I think you've kind of answered it because you just said that you spend a lot of time uh, talking with the person before you actually uh, put them on the board. I was, I was wondering, um, has there ever been any 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 interview or any sessions where you kind of went into someone's past life and you couldn't reveal it to them because it was it was it may be dangerous to their you know their 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 future? Yeah, I don't make that call. The higher self does, and that's one of the things that um, people need to understand when they do a session. Some sometimes there's apprehension because they're afraid. Something will come out from their childhood or they're going to be embarrassed or they did something and they don't want anybody to know. You know, the higher self will never bring forward any information that will hurt the client, that will traumatize the client or or anything like that. That one session I was talking about with that young guy with the archangel, um, he wanted so badly to get to the other side. And they said, no, he we can't tell him that yet. He can't see that yet. He's not ready for it. So the trauma or whatever needs to be healed first. And that's that's what my goal is and the team I work with because I do Reiki and I've worked with people for decades now um, to help them, you know, and, and, and to help them move ahead in their life. That's my that is my mission. It's not really about um, reaching the, the past life for the fun of it. It's like if it's going to help you heal, then great. I want to do that for you. But Brilliant. the higher self will not bring forward anything that will will hurt the client ever. Yeah, and well, if it does, then you have to question it. The, I meant to say to you, um, Suzanne, we do have two chat rooms here, and uh, okay. so um, this is where the questions are coming in from. Yeah, um, just to let you know, so the people listening to the show and they're throwing in the questions there, Steve. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Okay, Chris has a question. He, he says, uh, can you ask yeah. Suzanne, uh, has yeah. she ever encountered the so-called greys? Uh, Dolores Cannon often spoke of them in a, positive, in, in a positive manner, whereas lots of other people's encounters with them are negative. No, I've never encountered the greys. I have the Arcturians come through, but the Arcturians come through um, because they work with me during Reiki as well. So they come in for the healing session. Now, because it's shifted for me and I get involved uh, that way with the session, uh, but I've never had the grays. No, I've had um, 
angels come through, archangels come through. Jesus is there all the time. Um, you know, just different different deities come through. It depends on the person's religion and their belief system as to who comes through. But they're all in the same, like Dolores says, they're all in the same bowl of soup at the top. Yeah, you know, yeah. Jesus is there with Muhammad and Jehovah. And they're all in the same area. They all come from the same place. Have you ever had anyone kind of who, let's say, would, would be kind of believing in, I don't know, uh, any of the any of the deities other than Jesus, let's say, as you know, could be anyone. But have, has anyone ever kind of gone under believing in one thing and then kind of come out of it believing something else? Well, I've had I've never had that happen, but I've had many go in not truly believing in Jesus, and he's the first one that shows up, and then they believe when they're out. <laughs> it's like when 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 Jesus comes into a session. It's so emotional. Like, it's not just he's up in the air. His whole energy comes in. And it's, you can't help but, like, when they start crying, I have many sessions where people are crying when they, when they come in touch with Jesus, you know, or they, they see him on the other side. And so do I, because the energy is phenomenal. And you know when they've made that connection, whether they're religious or not, it's not about that. It's about healing. Yeah. Um, and at a soul level, they're obviously connected, or he wouldn't come forward. See, you know... I, I kind of I'm keeping a very open mind to the, the sessions and what people see, um, yeah. but I also know that the the powers to be have technology like voice to skull, mm -hmm. and you know and I'm sure they can you know uh, project stuff in your in your mind as well in some way, and of course there's one side of me going oh, you know the whole spiritual side like that experience daddy that. And the other side is going, well, gonna, you know, is, is it a case that they're using some, some kind of... Um, Are they um, really going to do that, though? Are they really going to take the time for the average Joe that comes for a session to sit down and um, project these things into their mind? For well, what, though? What purpose is that? Well, well, I, I, well it's, you know, did, we talked about, we quickly talked about TIs and what a TI is. Um, I and, don't know what that is. What is that? Well, a TI is a targeted in, individual. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, and um, there's thousands and thousands of these people all around, you know, all around the world, and mm -hmm. and they uh, they're experiencing, um, you know, gang stalking um, at all different levels. Um, some mm -hmm. of them have been tried to, you know, nearly killed, um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's quite serious. Now, I'm not saying that's the case for all these sessions because you're right. I mean, they, yeah. would they would they would they do every QHHT session as a kind of voice of skull technology? Chances are probably not, but it's something that I would say, well, I'm going to keep an open mind on certain sessions and certain information, but my kind of rule of thumb would be, if it's not provable, put it on the shelf, and mm -hmm. if it tells you to do anything negative, then that's not coming from the right source. Oh, absolutely, and you have to test <laughs> and quiz the ones that come through, which is something that I do. And it's not, and I'm sure everybody does, it's not always on the videos, though. We have to know who we're talking to. And there's universal law. You ask certain questions. They can't lie to you about it <laughs> when you get into the spiritual side of it, right? Right, okay. But, um, yeah, so there's safeguards that we put in place. People are protected um, from anything negative like that, you know. Okay, so um, you have done any sessions where it's some other entity, because we know there's, oh, we yeah. know, look, there's positive and negative in the world. You know, yeah. yin and the whole lot. You can't have one without the other. So we know there's negative yeah. energies and there's positive energies. Have you had any experiences where some energy might have tried to get in or jump in or yeah. something like that? Yeah, I have. Many of them. Um, and I'm not a, an expert like Alba. She's really, really good at entity removal. I just, um, I follow my guidance. I know who I'm connected to and on my own team. So, uh, but yeah, we do have, I like to call them like hijackers, you know, disembodied souls that have died mm. and they, uh, they, hook onto a person when they're at a, le a, a weak point in their life and they get in there and a lot of times they're in the heart chakra or they, they, they cause hip problems or pain somewhere in the body. And, um, you know, if we can, you find out early on in the, uh, the session when you call through the higher self, if you're talking to the higher self or one of these souls that might be um, caught in there. That's what and I found. That's, that's what I found interesting with Alba, um, yeah, when she, awesome. yeah, when she said, "Why well, you, 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 there's a spirit and it's on your hip," and she yeah. starts talking to that spirit and then starts yeah. removing it, mm -hmm. which is I do that too. I okay. do that too. 
just not as frequently. And if I feel like I'm not sure, then I ask the higher powers to do it because they can, right? Brilliant. And you send uh, you send them back to source, do you? Well, I I believe everybody should go back to the creator, the original creator of their soul, wherever mm. that is. Yeah. So, you know, there's all these things about the white light as well. Like, well, don't go into the white light because it's not good. So what do you believe, right? So I feel uh, if I give, uh, call in the archangels, Archangel Michael or, or Raphael or Jesus or whoever's there and trust that they are going to take them to the location they're meant to go to. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, can't, I, I can't make that kind of call. I'm not God, right? Well, I so. think you, I think you're right, right about the white light, and this is why when I seen a, a few of your interviews and what you've done, you were very grounded in your yeah. approach to things, and you just didn't. Well, because, sorry, because I know what I've seen personally. Mm. Okay, I've been up in that white light of Creator. I was shown this about five years ago um, in dream time, but I was consciously aware they took me up there and, and put me in that white light that people see when they're having a near death experience, you know, where it's beautiful yeah. and you just know everything. And they just plunked me in there for a good five minutes and said, see, this is what it's like. You don't have to kill yourself and you don't have to have a near death experience to be able to get here and experience this. So my team has showed me many different things. Like, um, they opened a portal above my bed, um, which I write about in my book, um, but that was a real big awakening for me. They said to me, okay, it's time now. Here, here we are. Here's your angels. Here's your team. You know, now here's thousands of us for you to look at. This is what we look like. You know, now get to work. Yeah. It was a real amazing moment for me when that happened. To the, see through like that. Yeah, the, well, the whole kind of white light thing, we've heard again from um, our research and guests we've had on about the Arconic recycling uh, trap. Yeah, you know. I've read about that too, right? Like, yeah. So that's why you, when you cross over, um, oh, I had one session, it was so funny. This girl was, she cropped, she was in the white light, and then these two beings appeared, and they were sitting there at a table, and they said to her, We are the, the, gatekeepers of the universe or something like that and you have to get past us to go to the white light and i started questioning them i'm like what are you talking about we have free will you know and they then they stopped answering questions so i called in an archangel gabriel came and i asked my client are those two beings still there and she's like no they took off so they were gone so there are there are spirits on the other side that will mess with you when you're in that realm yeah you're right but yeah the practitioner if they're intuitive enough or quick enough to catch it, then, you know, you can have a little bit of fun with them too. Well, one, one of the things that we were told <laughs> is that when you do pass over, uh, what you do is if, if the white light does appear, you turn around and you just say, bring me home, and you go home to wherever your home is. Right. You know, rather yeah, than, like, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Because many of us, we all come, in my opinion, from that white light that they put me in as a spark. But our spark went somewhere. It went to one planet or a star system we started in at some place right yeah i'm serious or our tourists or the pleiades or wherever yeah um, and then many of us want to go back there to where we're from that's it and basically so when you if you see the white light ignore it turn around look at the universe and just say Take well me i'm home. not going to say that i'm not going to no. say that because i don't know yeah. until i'm in that position i just know that i've been in that white light and we do a lot of healing work in that white light in it mm-hmm. and uh, in the quantum healing sessions, and it's mm. extremely powerful. Maybe very, that, very powerful. Maybe that's a question that you can do in an, your next session. You can uh, ask your uh, ask one of the, uh, the the spirits about that. We've got more questions for you. So over to yeah. Steve. Mm. Yeah, the, 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 this is a, a kind of a well, it's a comment slash question, I suppose, from Chris. But I mean, obviously, you will give us your expert opinion, uh, Suzanne. But well, Chris, Chris said. Uh, he he finds it difficult to trust anyone who claims to channel archangels. He said it doesn't sit right with him. Uh, he said it sounds weird, but his higher self rings alarm bells when people claim to channel archangels or ascended mm-hmm. masters, etc. He said yep. he doesn't generally trust hearsay from an unknown from unknown parties with unknown agendas. His good mm-hmm. feeling is that they are being conned to control us, the same as the three main religions would have in the past. Just wondering what are your thoughts on that? I I um well these sessions aren't channeling, first of all, just so he understands that. Okay, we're not actually mm. channeling an archangel or, or anybody. Um I I agree with him in, in a lot of respects with that. I 
I don't trust a lot either because my intuition is very strong as well. I'm not saying that the person that's channeling or believes they're channeling somebody, they may truly believe they are and maybe they are. But mm. I can't say whether they are or not. But I agree. I, there are a lot of um, entities on the other side that will mess with you. Yeah. They totally. just do. They do. You have to be very discerning. And uh, I wouldn't give myself over to anybody like that and, and allow them to, to channel through me. Yeah, no. Totally. Although I do have the Council of Nine talk through me all the time. But I'm aware of what I'm saying. It's not like I sit and go into a trance and they start coming through me like that. Yeah, the the Council of Nine, I've heard about different councils. And one book that I was given in the uh, in the late 90s was a book called The Only Planet of Choice. And it was information through a medium called Phyllis Shimner. And she talks about the Council. Now, I think she said it was the Council of Seven and not the Council of Nine. But I could be wrong. I'd have to get the book. And you have these... Other councils and Yavashtar command people talk about and there's this and there's that and there's this. Now I know the universe is vast mm-hmm. and as 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 it was said to us, whatever creature you can visualise does a humanoid form of that somewhere in the universe. Because yeah. it's billions and billions of stars and billions of races. Um, right. But I have um I have been involved in spiritually I've been I've done the spirit board on loads and loads of, of, of occasions in a the proper setting with spiritual people working in love and light and never have we ever had any issues um doing that because we were doing it for the right reasons and the right intent. However, right. you do get the odd um um spirit coming in trying to have a bit of fun. Not in yeah. a negative way, but trying to have a bit of fun, and you end up they kind do of mess with you. yeah, they do mess, and you end up kicking them off, and then get getting somebody else in. And we have right. we had their methods of vetting and checking and stuff uh, on the on the table, and you know people say, oh, that's you know, um, that's like an Ouija board, and I I kind of go, no, there's a difference between yes, it's the same board, but when you're working with it with love and light and in spirit with like-minded people. We call it a spirit board. If you're using it like kids or people who don't have a clue what they're doing, then it's an Ouija board and you don't know who you're asking in. But when we use a spirit board, I mean, Steve, I brought you down to a session one time. You did, yeah. Um, what did you think of it? That was your first time. That was my first time, yeah. And I mean, I ju- this I ju- was a few years ago, by the way. It, yeah. w- it was, yeah. And I mean, as you're saying about the, the spirit board slash Ouija board, and, and it's like a hammer. If you kill someone with a hammer, it's a weapon. If you use it to hammer and nails, it's a tool. Um, right. You know, so I mean, that, that's just my interpretation. But yeah, I mean, I'd never been to a session before, and obviously we've been doing this for for a long time. So Alan brought me down, and I met some some fantastic people, and I sat in on the session. I actually participated in the session, and I have to say, it was it was um, I I I I, I, I actually can't describe the feeling, but it was like as if you, you I was part of something uh, special. You know, that's uh-huh. that that's how I felt. Now we 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 haven't I, I haven't been to another one since. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it was it was uh, it expanded my mind anyway. I have to say because you know you see it on TV and it's kind of it is as Alan said, it's like the, the kids having a the college kids having a bit of fun and then something <laughs> something bad happens. But um, before we even there got are, started, it was it, it wasn't so much of it. Well, it was it was kind of a prayer of some sort, like yeah, it was protection, protection, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I, it was it was very enlightening. That's very important to protect yourself before you do anything. But you can use anything as a tool. It's your intention, like you were saying, Mm, right? So although it's a board, it's the intention. Like, the spirits are all around us. People don't realize that. They're so close. Like, there's no division. It's like they're standing on the other side of a mirror looking. When you look in the mirror, you see everything through the mirror. That's how it is when they look at us. Yeah, they are. They are. That's how I would. They they are everywhere, and I'll give you a, an example of that. Um, uh, one day, I was actually um, speaking to my nephew, who's very sensitive um, to spirit, and we were on Skype, and we had the camera on, and he said, uh, Uncle Alan, he said, uh, a spirit's just walked into your kitchen. Um, he could <laughs> see through the webcam, yeah. and I just said, well, that's fine. I said, as long as he's here with good intention, not bad intention, I don't mind. Yeah. A lot of times, it's just uh, like, if you can see through the veil, you're seeing into another dimension, you know, or another timeline. Like every, some people have the ability to do that, to see spirits like that. Yeah. And it's not like they're dead. <laughs> it's another dimension you're looking at and people don't realize. Yeah. And I don't know. We never found out who the, the spirit was, but they are everywhere. 
And uh, the one thing that I think Steve probably might have taken from that session as well is um, we obviously had a glass that we use for the actual table. And there's a lot of people will will say who've never experienced because you always find people are the ones to tell it that, that people who say, oh, you should never do that. And you go, have you ever done that? Oh, no, I've never done that. I wouldn't do it. Right. So you've never done it. But you advise me not to do it when you've never yeah. experienced it. Now, Steve, a lot of people say, oh, people just end up pushing the glass. But do you remember, I mean, did you ever, did you feel at the time that anybody was pushing that glass at the time? I have to say, my, be, before I went into it, obviously, I, you have to be sceptical. I, I had to be sceptical. I, I couldn't just say, I'm going to believe this, I'm going to, you know, hook, line and sinker. I had to be sceptical. Of course. And there were several of us around the table, we all had our fingers on the glasses, and it did move. The glass did move, and it moved quite a lot. And mm-hmm. logically, I'm thinking, could one of, could one person have done that and i'm thinking the the answer is no because everyone was kind of everyone was holding on to the glass and it did move and like if if one person wants to do it you would you you would notice because you you would see their muscles are little telltale signs in their arm you know when when they're kind Mm -hmm. of when they're pushing it their muscles would flex and all this but the thing is we we weren't there doing a tv show or some kind of illusion no we were there as spiritual people in love and light speaking to spirit yeah. So nobody was there to do anything. And these people, you, you know, uh, at the time were meeting every week and doing the same thing. So it was no big deal, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, yeah. to, to them. So, um, And this is the thing. It, it's a great way uh, it, for f- physical mediumship. It's a great, great way to show people the energy that spirit have. But here's the, here's the thing about it. You do not develop as your as a psychic or a medium using a spirit board, right? It's 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 purely okay for showing spirit energy, but you do not develop. It doesn't develop you in any way at all, and that's why when in myself when I used to um, use uh, do um, some have spiritual circles every now and again, I think in all the circles I've had, I probably used it twice because it doesn't develop your skills, your ability. Um, it's only there as a kind of physical mediumship just to show people the energy. Um, yeah. But, it, sorry, what, what, so we're sidetracking from QHHT. No, so, that's okay. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's all spirit anyway. Right, so let's find out more. Tell us more about, do you, uh, did you interview anybody or regress anybody? And is there anything they've said where they've been on the ball with, either in their life or something that has happened? Or is there anything that's been said that they've has they've said there's things coming down the line that we need to be aware of? Um, hmm. One of the first sessions I did, um, I had a guy on there who went to the future, and he went to the future about a hundred years ahead, and he said there was a lot of flooding. Now, obviously, we don't know if that's going to happen for another hundred years, but um, oh boy, I. I that's a tough one. I don't really, um, I don't, nothing's really jumping out at me right now. What do you mean? Like they've, do you mean like a, fu- like a future me, event? Yeah. Like a, you like know. a prediction or something. Yeah. Well, you know, we know there's multiple timelines and free will yeah. can change certain things. You know, you might get a prediction of, you might, your friend might say, or one of your patients might say, um, oh yeah, I'm high, the, my higher spirit is telling me that I'm going to buy a red car next Friday and they end up <laughs> buying a blue car because it's free will, you know. Right. Um, well, people should pay attention to jump to timelines too. Because it's not just something that happens with the quantum healing where you experience that stuff. It happens right now in 3D that you can jump a timeline. And if people pay attention to what's around them, you know, they will, they'll know if they've jumped a timeline. I know I have jumped about four of them and have had like physical evidence that I've done it. And in the moment I realized that I had done this, you know, so people just need to pay attention. Yeah. To their surroundings and I think we have to get more the one thing about people waking up spiritually um, yeah. and I've noticed it through my journey and I don't know about Steve you get very sensitive to the small things you pick things up that other people don't pick up yeah especially yeah, working with energies and somebody happened to say to me the other day um, that he said uh, we, were, we were talking about energies because we were talking about the Spooky 2 device and the Pain Genie and energies. And I said, isn't it funny? Over here in Ireland, you know, the saying is, oh, that person gives me a bad vibe. 
And I yeah. said, well, you're picking up on that person's energy. That's why you're picking up on the energy. Yeah, exactly. You've got to pay attention to that because our, en- our energy fields are bigger than we, we realize. You know, like our aura it can go for blocks depending how aware you are and how awake you are and how you um, take care of your body and um, removing negative things. Like so when you're, say your uh, energy field around you is the size of a room and somebody comes into the door and their energy, which is very low density, bumps into your positive energy, you're going to feel that, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, there's so much to understand. I want to just say one thing about the quantum healing. When you take a session... And this is this was explained by a higher self to me. Um, when you have a session and you actually connect to the higher self, there's like a gateway up above you or um, in your crown chakra area that once you connect to that higher self, it's almost like they unlock the door. So you have easier access. And what I'm finding is um, my clients are really catapulting forward on their awakening after they've had a session. I get messages and, and emails saying I'm getting download after download after download. I can't stop writing or now I'm painting or now I'm this or that. Like all this information is coming through from the quantum field because that gateway is open now. Okay. And they're connected. And the downloads that they're, they are getting, um, so they're, they're moving away from the kind of societal stuff and just getting more into the right brain, creative, yeah. intuitive side. Right, and they're at, they're connecting more to their higher self. This is what people want to be able to do. I want to connect to my higher self, so I'm going to meditate. And da, da, and, but they don't have that conversation unless they're really, really advanced, and they can you know astro travel and sit up with their their team up there. But this is what quantum quantum healing does. It is it allows you that time to break through that barrier and have that conversation with the other side of your your brain, like your right side, where all the knowledge is. Without but, the ego getting in the way. Well, I think it would be great. I mean, I know with mediums, um, the, think, the, it's, it's to try and work with your spirit guide and communicate with your guide, and that's part of your development, mm-hmm. is to learn the language um, with your spirit guide, and you get ringing in your ears, which, again, can be your guide trying to speak to you, and you need to meditate and tune in and learn the yeah. language between yourself and your guide. And that's I know, right. I know people used to say to me, Oh, I don't understand what that means when they get a reading. And, and I say, well, look, your guide is not going to give you war and peace if you only at the Alpha, Beta, Charlie, you know, if it, the ABCs. If you're just understanding ABC, they're not going to give you war and peace because you won't understand it. So right. they give you basic things to uh, that you understand. And again, it's the five clairs that a medium would use to uh, yeah. for their, their senses. Um and I've I've come across that time and time again, and people get dreams, um, and uh, also um, they try and interpret the dreams, and that's very hard when you get dream interpretation because it's unique to that person. So when you get this book to say, well, this is dream interpretation, you think, well, how can that apply to everybody else? Because it, it could mean something different. So does yeah. that does that happen in your sessions where the higher self will say something and? It'll be mean two different things to two different people. Um, well, it depends on it depends on the person because the higher self is uh, each individual has their own team above them, right? But that team is connected to the the uh, collective consciousness at the top. So everybody's higher self, like the collective higher self, is all together, and then each person has one aspect that comes down for them specifically right so when i'm talking to a higher self the whole collective is around them which could be giving information as well so some of it could be specific to that person but if the collective comes in it could be specific to many people i've I've had a session where i was doing i was helping a lady and her husband's higher self showed up in the session and made himself known that he was there and he was alive (laughs) in another city but he wanted to know what was going on in the session. So there's so many things that are possible. So she was talking to her higher self and then he showed up so he could just keep an eye on things. Okay, so... You know what I mean? We have to start thinking outside of the box. Yeah. Of what's possible. So if you if you regress... Say you have a, a lady there and you regress her and her higher self comes in and you're talking away. Could you ask their her higher self 
to have a word with her husband's higher self to try and... Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> many, of the, many of us probably do. I can't speak for other practitioners, but this is what I like to do. The private part of the, the sessions that never get posted is generally about children and family and all that stuff. Yeah. A lot of times we do healing and I ask them to do a scan for a person or their children or their husband or their, their parents. Can you scan that person? Can you fix that problem in their knee? Uh, we're already on it and they're there. You know, like there's no division. Yeah. And this is, this is what I like. The people that come for their, their healing, we can also, if it's for the highest good of the other person and their higher self agrees, but I can ask them, they're right there, if it's okay then they will commence the healing for that person as well. And they're trying, they're starting to get me into group healings now. And I'm, I know I'm not the only one that does this, but okay. I did one on the weekend and it was phenomenal. It was really cool. Fantastic. And what about, um, do you kind of agree with the fact that um, when we kind of choose the contract, our soul contract to come down here and do what needs to be done, um, one thing I've heard, and again, I don't know how true it is, but um, I've heard anyway is that, Depending on what your life is going to be and what you've agreed to do will depend on the amount of energy that you will be given. So if you're going to have, say, a hard life, you'll have 70% energy. But if you're going to have a quite an easy life, you might have 30 or 40%. You'll never get 100 because the human body can't cope with that. That's right. uh, You're right about that. The energy is so strong. Um, Mm. You know, when our higher selves can't really come down to our level, we have to kind of go up to their level. Mm. But in regards to what your purpose is on this planet, um, when you come in, in regards to energy, I had a a vision at one point where I saw somebody putting in my dream time, so I was aware, uh, like an energetic anklet on me. And I thought, oh, how cool is that? They're giving me a present. But then I found out that before I incarnated here, I had an agreement with my higher angelic side that if I start to wake up, they need to lock me down because I abused my power in a previous life. Ah. So this anklet was a way for me not to draw too much energy and abuse it again. Hmm. So there's things like that that come into play that we're not aware of either in contracts. So and they just brought that to my attention because you mentioned how much energy we get when we come in, right? Yeah. According to our purpose. So we can restrict our own self before we come here and not realize it. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And how do you deal with people? Because there's obviously going to be, you know, there's people that are um, open minded to a certain extent. But when it comes to the old spiritual side, they go, oh, I'm not believing that stuff. I'm just kind of a, a meat and veg kind of person. And, you know, I don't I don't buy into that. Do you think there's a fear in them somewhere that, again, we, we, we kind of say a cognitive dis- dissonance to a certain extent, you know, because if they accept that, then their world is going to change and they don't want the world to change. So they draw the belief in the, the, the yeah. kind of materialistic earth. And are you okay there, Steve? <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry, Bless you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Give up them fags, even though he doesn't smoke. Oh. Um, so do you, do you, how do you deal with that? Have you come across that? Um, I think that applies to, like you were saying, when you're trying to help other people wake up, right? And they, you want to tell them about, you know, how to improve their, their lives or tell them that these modalities are available to them. And to believe that or to believe what you're saying would take more work and would change their life. And it, it does change your life when you do these things. So, you know, I think there's enough information on the Internet now and enough videos that people watch it and they either want to do it. Or they're freaked out because they think the people are being possessed, which they're not, <laughs> you know. But you're right. They would have to change their life, and it does change your life when you have a session. Yeah. It's life-altering. So um, I think there's that fear there. And, and we've been suppressed for so long to be a certain way and live a certain a certain way, you know. Yeah. Um, and I find it's the older generation more than anything that is stuck in their ways. Yeah, definitely. You know? And that, that, that also goes for the medical system. I yeah. see it that, uh, you know, there's a certain generation that just believe that doctors have all the answers and they won't go near any alternative, you know. But stuff. the higher self, the higher self will tell you, you know, doctors, we still need them. We still need doctors and we still need some medications, you know, but yeah. they can only do so much. Yeah. And then there's your higher self that can heal anything. Yeah. And what, what's your um, experiences with self-healing? 
having the ability to do that? Um, well, I've never personally done it, but my husband has MS, um, and he's managed it for 30 plus years now without being on medication. He has a very strong mindset, um, but he does have the lesions with his MS. And one of the things we did with the body scan was, um, and one of the reasons I think it took so long for me to get to his higher self was because they knew I wanted them to heal him. Okay. Um, but when we finally did get there, they said, no, they couldn't heal it. It's part of his mission to be here to help others with MS. Um, and But what they would do is kind of put a hold on the lesions, okay, so that they wouldn't advance. So when he had his last MRI, the doctor couldn't understand why they were glowing. Like, why are your... They didn't advance, but they were, like, glowing white now. And they yeah. are kind of a whitish, grayish on a on an image, right? But she had never seen that before. So, you know, um, self-healing is a big thing. Yeah. But, you know, the higher self can help you do it. You have to have the, the mindset. The body can heal anything. Okay, because um, it'd be just interesting. We we had a, a a doctor on, Dr. Terry Wallace, who was diagnosed with MS, and she her, she you know, she was a medical doctor, and yeah. she went off and did all the research, and now she's ninety five percent back to normal. Um, yeah. Because she she applied her, um, the, it's called the, the Wallace Protocol that she put together, and um, she uh, is trying to help other people with MS. To actually mm-hmm. change your diet, and basically the, the food she was using and the things she was doing was, you know, affecting the affecting it. And we've seen photos of her in the in a wheelchair and everything. And uh, she came on the show and told us all about it. I mean, you know, what a great great to have a doctor on who who have actually amazing. done the yeah. research. So um, that might be something of interest for your husband as well to check out. Dr. Yeah. Terry Wallace is her name. Yeah, for sure. Um, but the, the healing, you know, we've, we looked at the, the likes of The Secret. I'm sure you heard the DVD in the book, The Secret. Uh, oh, yeah. About putting their mind over matter and then using their own mind to actually heal themselves. And uh, I don't know whether if Spirit has come through, um, the higher self has come through any, any, uh, any patients you've had and recommended doing it or have said anything about it. About the, spi- about the Spirit? Healing its own self? About, yeah, about the ability of the patient to actually heal themselves, you know? Well, they, one of the things they say when we do a body scan is they can, they can start healing a person. Let's say somebody quit smoking, for example, okay? They will heal the lungs, but they'll watch for three months to see if you're serious about quitting first. Um, but you, they will give you um, things that you have to do to help your own health. So... They're going to help you heal with quitting smoking, but you can't smoke anymore or you can't be in a room where there's smoke anymore or you have to give up this or that or you have to start taking certain supplements. You know, if they say they're going to fix something for you and it's your own spirit you're talking to. So it is your own body and spirit, right? Mm -hmm. If they give you specific instructions, you have to follow them. If you don't, then they know you're not serious and they won't do the work. Yeah, they no. won't. They won't facilitate it if they don't think you're serious. Yeah, no, I totally so, agree. It'd be fantastic to be able to talk to them direct on. But you can. That's what you do in the session. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, but every time you want to talk to them, you'd have to go and have a session. I'm talking well, about. Well, no, like, no. This is what I'm saying. That's what I was explaining yeah. about the gateway. Once that's open, there's so much clearer communication between your higher self and yourself. Um, it, it's a change that happens after you have a session. Yeah. In my, and that's what I've been told from the higher self. This is what happens. And, and my experience and feedback I'm getting from my clients is what I'm basing it on. And they're saying that when they have a session, they can then speak to the higher self clearer or they can communicate. Yeah. yeah. They hear better. They, they get clear communication. There's no block in the way. You know, maybe because they've had that that experience, that metaphysical mm. experience that they can see or they have the emotional feelings while they're on the other side. Because not everybody sees. No. Some people it's a knowing or, or a, you know, a feeling that they have. Yeah. So, uh, but they trust it enough mm. that it, you know, when they come out of their trance and then they're going on with their life, they mm. see a huge shift in the way they can communicate with their higher self. Well, the, the five, their guide. Yeah, well, it's the five clairs. So I'm going to try and remember them all. Um, with, I always forget one of them. You've clear, uh, clear uh, audio, so you yes. can hear clear voice, that's a feeling and knowing, clear sentience, yes. the smell, clear yes. cognizance, which is um, yes. knowing. Um, knowing, 
and then, then there's another clear aroma, which is a smell. So some people might go in and they smell cigar smoke and you go, oh, that's your granddad, he used to smoke them that's, cigarettes. So, that's right. But if people are not, have never heard of these, go to internet and just type in the five clairs, which is what the mediums use to communicate the spirit. Um, mm-hmm. And depending on how strong you are, some mediums have one, some have two, some have three. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, clairvoyance. I know... Um, uh, do, 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 there is I, that's just off the top of the head but and people can google them anyway um, no but that's um, that's it's great to be able to do that I must, it must be fantastic to be able to do that after a session to get the communication and again I would say to people that if they're telling you to do the right thing then that's not a problem but if they're telling you to do the wrong thing then that's not coming from spirit now we have right. we have more questions for you there oh Steve you can run through it the list there, I well just, done. I just got them for you. Clairvoyance is clear uh, seeing, see. clear cognizance, clear knowing, clear audience, clear hearing, clear empathy, uh, emotional feeling, clear gustance is tasting, clear sentience, physical feeling, clear, clear tangency, touching, and clear uh, salience. Yeah. Claire, clear uh, smelling aliens. It looks like aliens. Uh, yeah. whatever. Oh, Claire Sally. Sorry, I didn't see the aliens as uh, smelling. Yeah. yeah, it's quite interesting. So there's more than five. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. But you know, you'll find that there's a mix of the five is is in there. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, do you have more questions there? Yeah, I have a, a question, uh, Suzanne from Paddy on People's Internet Radio chat room. Uh, thanks okay. for the question, Paddy. Paddy's wondering, can spirits see us? Uh, and that's quite an interesting question because you know sometimes uh, if if obviously you're in contact with uh, your higher self, um, do you actually see the higher self? Can the higher self see you, uh, or is it just a case of they're there and you know they're there? Is it just a case During, of knowing? That's a great question. <laughs> it's a really good question. Um, I I see the angels come through. I see the Arcturians and the energies. Okay, but I had one session where. Jesus was facilitating removing an entity of this person. Okay. So the person was lying on the bed with the eyes closed. And after the entity was removed and we took care of that, I put my right hand over the heart chakra. Okay. To give some Reiki and fill with light that area. And Jesus said, Suzanne, use two hands, please. Okay. And her eyes were closed. So you tell me where that came from. (laughs) That kind of freaked me out. Because her mm. eyes were closed. So, the, yeah. yes, in, in regards to that question, yes, they can see us. Oh, They well, can. Okay, so, Paddy, you're going to have to be careful what you're doing, so. So, that's because the spirits are <laughs> you watching. You can also say, hey, turn around, I need my privacy. <laughs> you know? And that, actually, that, that's an interesting question. So, I mean, if you, okay, let's say you cool. are, I mean, okay, obviously people don't want to be watched. Uh, but if, if someone was, let's say, having an intimate moment with one's other other half, I mean, and you suspected spirits could, can you just, you can just say that, can you spirits, I, I need some privacy, yeah. and, and that will work. Universal law, they have to, they have to respect you if you say, I need you to leave. Okay. <laughs> they actually have to hear you though, and that's something I'm learning too in these sessions is, when you want something, if you want help from your higher self or your angels or whoever, you have to say it out loud, and they, they bring this up over and over during my sessions is, say the question. You know, I've had one client um, having telepathic communication with angels on the other side, and I'm trying to answer questions, and they've told that person to stop asking questions. Please just let Suzanne ask the questions. We need to hear the questions asked in order for healing to be done and that kind of thing. I had to verbally say it. And another time, I, you know, right at the end of the session, I, the body scan was almost over, and I said, oh, you know, sorry, can you... Please check her third eye. She wants her third eye to be open. And they said, yes, we've been waiting for you to ask. So it's important that, you know. You have to ver- you want- so you have to verbalize it. You can't say yeah. it in your mind. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm finding in my session. Well, okay. Oh, that's interesting because normally, you know, you normally just say it in your mind. But, yeah, I yeah. suppose verbalizing They can hear it- you, but I guess it's, maybe it's some kind of, like, verbal contract or something they need to hear you audibly i'm not sure maybe i should ask that yeah if you could ask that maybe it's some yeah. kind of by saying the verbally you're reinforcing what you want yes maybe because yeah. th- thoughts your thoughts can be quite random and you don't things might pop into your head for no apparent right. reason where yeah. if you actually verbalize it then you have to think about it right yeah you probably just answered it right there 
Yeah, so I think that's probably it. Because you verbalise it, you have to think about it and then say it, where if you think about it, it could be just a random thought. Yeah. There you go. Um, the other thing I'd just like to point out, which is completely irrelevant, maybe, but something that people should know, and this is just my understanding of it, the difference between a spirit and a ghost, you get this all the time, right? Um, my understanding is this, a ghost will not interact, a ghost is a repeat of something that happened at that particular time, and it's just like a video being replayed, replayed, a ghost will not interact with you, a ghost will just, you'll see it, and then it'll just a replay and of something that happened at that time, where a spirit will have interaction with you, and they'll be able to interact, um, well that's my understanding. <clears throat> That makes sense. I've never really thought about that, but it makes sense to me. Yeah. To, you know, because I've seen, I've seen ghosts before and they just, you know, they're there and it's like they don't, they don't even know you're there. And then I've had interactions with spirits where they've talked to me, yeah. you know, and that's, you're right. They're aware, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good just question too. yeah, that's that's just my kind of my understanding of it that they, that's just a replay of something that happened in history. Um, you know, you, you go on the on the YouTube and they say, oh, you know, these ghosts that were seen in the park or whatever, and there's no interaction. It's just like a replay of something that happened at that particular time, where spirits yeah. spirits will interact with you. Um, the other thing that um uh, I hear as well and come across, I've done I've done clearances and I've move spirit on to the light if you want to call that uh, that was a long time yeah. ago i just recently did a, a clearance of a negative spirit in a house for a family member and um, and i think it's important to say to people that it's not all love and light that there are negative energies out there and you have to be oh, careful and you have uh-huh. to you have to use protection the first thing you learn if if you join any spiritual circle or anything got to do with spirit the first thing you learn is all about your spiritual protection and if they don't teach you that you're in the wrong circle there because that's very important now i'll tell you something um suzanne which frightened me a few years ago um i went to training um by a medium and um, she actually turned around to everybody in the audience and said, you don't need protection because if you don't think negative, then you don't need protection. And I just, my jaw just dropped on the ground and I thought, she has no concept of, you know, the negative energies that are out there and what's I've going on. I've heard that on. before too. <laughs> I had about the same reaction you did. What? Yeah. Uh, you I, uh, have to protect yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I just my jaw dropped when she said that, and I said she has no concept of the the energies out there, the negative energies out there. Um, but and this is why I think, as you say, it's important to let people know that when you're doing your session, you 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 obviously do that for the people and protect them because. Oh, it's part. Of, yeah, it's part of the protocol and the script that you know, and I do that anyway with my sessions. But uh, yeah, there's so mm. much so much uh, protection for the client, like nothing can get to them. Um, and uh, we're doing it for the highest good anyway, and we call in the highest light. We don't call in anybody that's not from, you know, a high source. Yeah. That's for sure. We have about 15 minutes left, and we normally focus, obviously, on the, on the positives and the, the future and, and yeah. what's going on. Over the time that you've been involved in this and um, been helping people and waking up, Obviously, that's your job. You are so contracted to come down and to wake people up to what's going on and everything else. What's your plans yeah. for the future? And what do you see? Uh, how do you see things at the moment? And do, the way things you, you hopefully will, you know, will happen, will transpire, you know, in the, in the next few years. Um, with the world or with myself? With yourself and, and the world. Um, well, whenever I start to think I know what I'm going to do, they change it. <laughs> oh, okay. So getting my own ego out of the way is something I got to do. Um, but I do see them um, over the last few years uh, steering me in the direction of doing large group healings with the white light. Um, that's what I see. I'd love to do that. I like doing one on one, but I'd rather have a whole mass of people there and call in that healing light and do that and get a whole bunch of people, you know, Um and like I said on Saturday, that's what we had done um, during the class that we had here. Um, but always I'm going to be helping people. That's my mission here, you know. So I follow my guidance. Sometimes I don't uh, always pay attention because it's not something I really feel I want to do or I can't see myself doing that. But 
everything falls into place for everybody, you know. Um, if you listen to your guidance, um, they know what your path is. That's a thing. Like, we're contracted to come down here. We have guides and that follow us and help direct us. And if we listen to them, then we'll be going in the right direction. And we just have to trust and be open to go with the flow of things. You know, but listen to that little voice and they'll test you. Mm. They'll, you know, they will. They'll, they'll give you a little, a, a little test first, like turn left instead of turning right. And what, and they'll do that a lot until they know that you're listening to them. Once they know you're listening, then they'll start to give you, um, more clear cut information on what you're meant to do because they know you're paying attention. Well, one of the things that I used to say, and I've changed my thinking on this now that I've kind of learned a bit more, where I used to say years ago, go with your gut feeling, but that's yeah. kind of wrong. I think you have to go with your heart feeling, not yeah. your gut, because your gut is your solar plexus, and I don't think that's the right thing to say. I think you have to go with your heart, because it's but, all about love and light, and it's all about you know love or fear, and go with your heart feeling. It is, but your gut and your ego actually is there for a reason, too, mm. to bring awareness to things that we don't want to step into. Mm. So as much as we don't, you know, we don't want to be in fear or anything like that, but if that's the only way our team is going to get our attention to not go forward, to give us an uneasy feeling, then we've got to, once we have that initial feeling of uneasiness, then check in with our heart and go, well, okay, why am I feeling that way? Yeah. You know, but if that's the only way they're going to get your attention to go with your gut first, you know, it's all into all about intuition. And once they once they've got your attention, then check with your heart. And then when you start and, when you start tuning in and start trusting what you're getting, I think that kind of escalates, doesn't it? it yes, it does. But you can also if you're listening to your mind about something you want to do um, or a direction you feel that you're meant to go. Um, you can totally block what they're trying to tell you. And, and, you know, I can use myself as an example. I set myself up to start traveling to do this, to reach people that I couldn't, that couldn't come to me, you know, and I really wanted to do this. And the, when I first started thinking that way, I, when I was in that state, you know, that funambulistic state just before falling asleep or waking up, I think it was, I had a guide show up beside my bed that said, you will change your mind. And he was, you know, dressed in red robes. He was very regal looking. I've never seen him before. And my first thought then was about traveling. And I'm like, traveling to help people. I'm like, well, no, I, this is what I want to do. But then they continued to squash everything I tried to do to, to um, get it going. Everything I organized, they squashed it. They put a roadblock in the way. But what about they free will? Not want, well, I guess I'm, I was getting off my path. And I'm awake enough to know what I'm supposed to be doing to help people. Yeah. Um, but just not in the way. And there's obviously another reason why they don't want me to be on the road right now. So I have to trust that and go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. We, we've, we've talked about this time and time again on the show about the path. And people say, well, what is my path? And that's the hardest thing to try and mm -hmm. find. But yeah. what I always say, I'm not going to go through the whole spiel of it, but look, it's very easy. You know when people turn around and go, oh, no matter what I do, it never works out for me. And um, we say, well, the reason why it doesn't work out for you is because it's not for you. When yeah. it's for you, the energy will be right behind you. That's right. And, and we've experienced this with OAM Radio, myself and yeah. Steve, where we've hit a brick wall and we've said... You know, will we, will we carry on doing the radio show? I mean, we've done enough and or we're just hit a brick wall and, you know, maybe we should just pack it up. And all of a sudden this energy comes in and, and then we're off again. Yeah. And um, for another few years. Um, so and we were told, well, I was told and I'm sure Steve would be told if he had the session that this was basically what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. This and the spiritual mm -hmm. side, but also educating and, and talking on the radio show. So yeah. we're going to be poor for the rest of our lives, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've had plenty of experience. Yeah, there'll be, uh, there'll be no, uh, no money coming our way at all. We'll just carry on doing what we're doing. But there you go. <laughs> Asha, we, we've, we've been on the air now eight years now. Uh, coming wow. up to, Coming up to eight years, yeah. 
And I didn't know who you were until you messaged me last week. I'm like, uh, well, this is cool. <laughs> there you go. I always well, wanted to go over to Ireland. <laughs> that puts their ego straight in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, no, uh, that's no, that's brilliant. That's what we like. That's what we like. We're just gonna have to sack our PR and marketing department. <laughs> we, we <laughs> well, just, I'm focused on what I'm doing, right? So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. The, the the thing is, there's a lot of people that have been doing this for a lot of years because that's the kind of sole contract and. Yeah. Maybe what they're doing is they're they're just resisting something they know they have to do, mm-hmm. and and they need to kind of you know uh, they need to go and test the water and go and do it and try it and see if the energy is behind them. Now there is a lot of talk about where we're in this quantum program and it's all pre-programmed and you know we have a little bit of free will, but basically you know your your life is panned out for you and your path is panned out for you. Um, yeah. And uh, and I think you're right. I think we all have a path to go on. Some people have to find a path. Um, and if you um, if you do tend to go off there and you're on a spiritual path, they'll probably give you a nudge and say, right, we're going to push you back on. Yeah, generally what I've found is that the people that are here to help other people incarnated into really rough childhoods. Like they had really rough go of it in the beginning. And... Um, I think that's just so we can learn life lessons and be able to have um, examples to help other people with that we're trying to help or wake up once we realize that's what we're here to do. But if you talk to any healer out there, the majority of them have been in, in homes that have been struggle. You know, you struggle or mm. there's abuse or there's we just put ourselves into these situations right off the bat to try and raise the frequency in that to try and break that link or be be the the one on the chain to break that, you know, where, so the abuse doesn't go forward. And also, yeah, you know, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say every family has one person like us. Yeah. And and the other thing is, and it's not a case of people coming from a a rough background or something happened to them. I think also um, people are giving, they're given the skills over their life, over a certain Mm -hmm. period so they right. can use them skills when they get to the goal. You know, That's when they right. get to the end. Like, I, I know myself, if you look back on certain things that I've done in my life, everything was geared towards what we're doing now. Exactly. And That's what, what I mean. That's yeah. what I meant. And, Maybe and, I should have said a more difficult <laughs> well, no, difficulties we've gone through. But it, it depends on the person's life because they're the tools that they're giving you in whatever way they can be, whether it's an experience that's happened something in your life or whether you do something in your life there's training that will bring you to or let you do some stuff like I know that if I didn't do what I did in my life we wouldn't be doing this radio show because it's all got to do with technology and everything else mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm sure Steve's the same both of us are from a technology background and we uh, and you know how me and Steve met up well that's a story in itself but uh, yeah I think you're right I think we're all given um, the tools in our life as we're growing up, and then maybe something, maybe at the does it does a crossroads that we get to, and that's when we make the choice whether we use them abilities that we've been given to help others right. or whether we we don't. Right. Yeah, I agree with you, hundred percent. Right. We've more questions for you. Very quickly, we can throw them sure. in there, Steve. Yeah, yeah, we have a question from Lee on PIR, and Lee says, "How, uh, Suzanne, how can you tell if a spirit is malevolent when they operate outside of your true instincts, or rather, not malevolent and only benevolent?" Oh my goodness, those malevolence and benevolence. Tell me which is which. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, bene- benevolent is a good spirit, and malevolent is a bad spirit. Okay, so how do I know? How do we know if they're a good, a bad spirit pretending to be good. Is that what you're saying? Let me see. How can you tell if a spirit is bad, bad <laughs> when they <laughs> operate outside of your true instincts, or rather, not bad no. and only good? So uh, basically, how do you know? Because we said they were spirits. Sometimes trick you. I'll try and you know. Yeah, I find that in my sessions anyway. Um, it's like we're interviewing, right? When we're talking to the higher self or whoever's come through. So mm. they'll trip themselves up. Yeah. And I find, um, in, just in regards to quantum healing anyway, if I get a higher self that answers yes, yes, yes mm-hmm. <laughs> to the questions, then I start thinking, okay, why don't you have more information if you're their higher self? So then I start to like get tricky with what I'm asking. Yeah. And, and they trip themselves up or they just stop talking. Very good. Very good. And yeah. then, as you said, you can call in Archangel oh, Michael, whatever. Call. And 
Exactly. Call in the archangels or, or whoever and uh you ask them actually who is who is creator. If they can't tell you who creator is or mm-hmm. I had one the other day say, Well, we don't need to work with I don't need to work with him. You know, I I don't need to work with the angels. I'm like, Okay, who are you? <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. So that was quite an interesting one, but uh it was a soul that was disembodied and uh hooked onto a client and he ended up going home to his family, which was cool. Brilliant. You know. Well, listen, yeah. we've reached that time. Suzanne, it's been fantastic information. Thanks a lot for coming on. We've learned a lot more about the QHHT. As I say, I've seen uh, uh, some of your sessions, and uh, I really did think your your approach is very grounding. You, you know, just, there, there are one or two people that are a bit up there, airy-fairy, but I found your approach to be very grounding and very questioning. You know, you just didn't believe everything. You question things, which is I found very, uh, very enlightening. Um, Thank you. And very helpful. But um, thanks for coming on the show. I'm going to pass you over to Steve. And Steve's going okay. to get all your contact details where people can find you. And um, if they want a session or just get in touch with you. Steve. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Suzanne, I want to say thanks. It's been absolutely fantastic information. And uh, even Chris Chris uh, also said uh, thanks very much for taking the time to answer his questions also. Hey, no problem. And uh, we do have a link to your own personal website here, SuzanneBertolis.com. Um, we yep. have a link to the QHHT, which is QHHTOfficial.com as well. Are there any other links that you want to throw out there where people can find out some more information if they, if they uh, want to find out what you're up to or maybe book a session? Sure. Um, well, my website has all my information, okay? But I do have a YouTube channel. So if you punch in Suzanne Bertola's QHHT, uh, a video will come up on the side and you can always subscribe. Or um, on my website, there's the subscribe button for that too. But generally, all my contact information and everything I do, my blogs and uh, I do readings as well. Um, and you don't have to be with me for me to do an intuitive reading for you. Um, that's from my website as well. You know, so everything's Brilliant. there. Excellent stuff. All right, yeah. Suzanne, stay with us there for a minute. We're just going to sure. pop off to a musical break, and we'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com and People'sInternetRadio.com. Okay, it's a star man waiting in the sky. There we go. That's uh, just send, send that one out for Chris, because Chris likes a bit of uh, David Bowie. And, uh, yeah, good information there from Suzanne. Again, just for, for, uh, for those who who may not be near the chat room, I'll just call out the uh, web address again, Suzanne Bertolas, uh, B-E-R-T-O-L-A-S dot com. That is the web address. And uh, as she did say, you'll find all the relevant links that you need there. And she is on the YouTube as well, so you can uh, find out, uh, get all the videos and uh, check out exactly what she's all about. Brilliant stuff. And also a book that really helped me to understand the spiritual side. Um, A lady in... uh, the UK called Mia Dolan had a book out called The Gift and I found that to be very interesting and very educational on the spiritual side because it's all about her spiritual journey and there's a few things I learned in there that I didn't have the answer to at the time but she kind of gave the answers in the book so it's called The Gift, Mia Dolan, very very interesting book, um, I didn't want to put it down I read it in two days I think over the two day period I read the whole book because it was very interesting um, now um the other thing is, we did mention the issue with um, Lisa Harrison, and we got an email in Jordan the show, and I'm just going to read out here as it is, um, because obviously, you know, um, it, we, our, you, our listeners um, want to comment on some of the stuff that we talk about on the show, and it says, uh, I have been watching Lisa and Danny for some time. They explained how they were taken in by Agent Heather, and found out that she was not someone they wanted to be associated with. Lisa and Danny have some amazing interviews out there. I don't know what Lisa has stolen information from others. She's a very good interviewer. She may restate their information, but I have always heard her give the source. Both Danny and Lisa try to expose the truth, just like you two do. It might be good to re uh, reevaluate your opinion of these two. Well, it's not our opinion. It's information that we were given. Um, intel that we were given um, so it's not our opinion uh, I don't find any duplicity there although they were wrong about the OPPT and admitted it on a long interview in public they have always been about seeking answers to learning the truth and it got them in trouble um, over time 
They later talked with Heather again but didn't rejoin or condone her in any way. Just a different perspective. We all grow and change with time. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, I'm sure we do. Um, but that information that we got was Intel. Um, and Thomas has a good source of Intel and information. As I say, it's not our opinion. Um, but I just found it very strange that um, Alison got that information from her herself. Um, but then again, there's obviously a reason for it, maybe. As uh, Suzanne said, there's probably a reason for it. Um, I didn't find the information any any much different in the other interviews that Alison has done. But obviously there's a reason for it. And so we're going to, you know, maybe there is. <clears throat> maybe something heard something in that. Somebody heard something in the interview, in that interview, that they didn't hear in other interviews and it changed their life or helped them in a positive way. So, hey, we're not going to knock it. You know, it's all good. So... Um, anyway, so our guest on next week is a chap called Clive DeCarroll. Now, we haven't had Clive on the show on for a long time, and he's all about health, alternative health. And if you remember, if people have a good memory, um, Clive was diagnosed with um, arthritis, and the doctor said there's nothing, nothing they could uh, do uh, for his arthritis, and he said, well... Uh, I can do something about it. And he went off and did the research and now he's kind of hop skipping and jumping around the place um, because he's done his own research on what the body needs. Um, he's very good, very informative, great information from Carl. So tune in next week for that. It's going to be very interesting. So um, what else do we have on the list here? Um, just um, again, I think what we need to do is, as Suzanne said there in the show, um, there's a lot of things going on and from an energetic point of view everybody is experiencing things differently um, the whole new earth thing you know uh, is it Dolores Cannon saying that it's going to split and then some people are going to go over there and other people are going to stay here And I don't really know um, I really really don't know I think you just have to go with what you feel um, and just get you know more tuned in get, trying to get more tuned in as much as you can uh, on what's going on the one thing Suzanne said and I kind of agree with her and Steve will, will be the same is that we do avoid negative people or negative situations you know we just avoid them I've, I've no interest in getting into conversations with people or getting into arguments or debates with people who are just not ready for the information how about you? Um, the, uh, likewise, yeah. I mean, there's certain, you, you, you know I've spoken before, obviously off radio, uh, about some of the people that I work with. I have to work with them on a daily basis. I don't really have much of a choice. And I'd say 90% of the people who I work with, they're, they're close-minded. That's probably the, uh, the best term to use. That They're very close-minded. And I continue to plant the seeds, but, you know, I, I haven't really seen many of the seeds I've planted come to fruition. Um, but... Uh, like we're all going to meet people like that in life, I suppose. Uh, all we can do is educate ourselves as best we can. As as we say, we're all on the journey. We're all on the path. As Alan said before, if you're on the wrong path, doors won't open. If you're on the right path, doors will. So you'll know whether you're on the right path. Uh, and you obviously, you will get information from your higher self, be it uh, dreamlike states, as as uh, Suzanne said, some 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 somnambulant state, as well. I have a problem with that word. Um. But, you know, I mean, we, we're we all obviously here for a reason. I don't believe that we're all kind of just here uh, by chance. Uh, we're all here for a reason. We all have a purpose. And it's up to each and every one of us to find that purpose, I, I suppose. And whether it's a talent, even if it's just a talent. And, you know, some people say, I've no talents. If you have two ears, you've got two. There, there, there's a talent straight away. You can just lend an ear. I don't obviously don't not, don't chop it off and give it to someone, <laughs> but you can lend an ear. So, you know, some, someone who may be going through something. Sometimes all they need is someone to listen to, uh, listen to them, and you know you you can be that if that's all it is, you know. Uh, but I think we're all here for a reason, and there you are going to come across a lot of negative people, and yeah. Uh, we just we avoid them as best we can. If we have to work with them, we obviously, as uh, Alan, Alan said this before, also, um, you know, you protect yourself. You, you have your 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 aura. You kind of you, you can learn how to kind of pu pull in your aura, so you're not kind of uh, bumping off other people and inheriting their negativity. And for people that are just interested in the protection thing, all you do is visualize a gold, like a golden egg, around you. And maybe that golden egg is surrounded with barbed wire and it's on fire. That If anybody tries to get through, they're going to get hurt, either burnt 
or with uh, 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 get cut by the barbed wire. So that's that's why I see it. You know, purple and gold are the very high colours in, in spirituality. Um, but it can be a white light. You know, it can be a white light, uh, a white egg. But you have to make sure that when you do cover yourself in the in, in a light, whether it's gold, purple or white, that it covers you completely um, underneath and top as well, not just on the side. Because there are negative energies out there, folks. Um, and no, there's no doubt about that. You know, there are negative energies and um, they're not nice. And they wait for low vibrations and they can... Uh, you know, so it's just make sure that you are you're protecting yourself. Even if you're not spiritual, just visualize for a few minutes. Especially if you're going into a place that is negative, very very important as well. Um, and again, I just want to mention on the FB side for people who are uh, connected to my Facebook personal page. Um, when I put up, I'll put up an article probably during the week. And if you see it there. Um, just give it a like, even if you don't like it, just like it. And I just want to see... He's craving people yeah. to like his article. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a t-shirt with Norman, no mates. <laughs> and um, I just want to see what happens with Facebook, whether they are trying to pull a fast one or not. And if they are, then we'll know that, and I'll just kind of, we'll just have to pack it in and go off to MeWe and just keep OAM on Facebook um, and um, and do something like that. But, um, yeah, so that's really the news, Jordan Rigg. If there's anything else that you can give us, I send in. We do look at them. As I say, I'm still working on a private project at the moment. But if there's any news that you have, let us know. Or anything that you experience or hear about the new earth or any energies and stuff like that. I mean, send us over because let us know. I know people are saying um, they are feeling things and, they're, and they are seeing things. Especially with this, um, I gave out the page there, Universal News Media or something. Remember the, the last week's show, the week before, about the planets. That yeah. the 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 weather the weather cams that were unfiltered and they're seeing planetary bodies around the planet. So that's quite interesting. So there seems to be an awful lot going on. So again, watch out for the CGI YouTube videos because there's a lot of CGI out there as well. Um, and you just have to be careful and and do a bit of filtering and uh, use your own uh, you know uh, intuition yourself and what what you feel sounds right. Um, or it looks right but uh, so that's for myself Alan James take it easy have a, a great week um, if there's any news as I say let us know I don't think there's anything happening during the week that I didn't remember but if there is we'll uh, we'll, uh, we'll put it up don't forget we have the United We Strike Marathon yesterday the podcast is up there now we talked to Dr. Rima Lebeau great information um, um, with Dr. Rima Lebeau and oh by the way there's a hemp shop in Dublin in Capel Street. So I might contact the guys in that shop and see if you want to come on and do um, an interview. Also, what we've done is, very quickly, myself and Steve have received their Lemurian plugs. They came in. So we're going to uh, plug them in. Well, we, we can't plug them in because they're on a the different AC current. But you put them near the power. And we're going to see if love and peace and light comes over our household for the next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll That's a big ask from, for such a small plug, I, I must say. Exactly. For myself, anyway, Alan James, take it easy. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Right, for myself, Stephen George, it's been a great show. Uh, thanks to everyone who joined us this evening on the live show. And also those of you who are listening to the podcast as well. It's been absolutely fantastic. Just to know that you're there listening to us, as Alan says, gabble on uh, week after week. Uh, well, hope, hopefully we are making a difference and together we can make some sense of this big ball of wax, as they say. So until next week, take care and don't forget, uh, do hit Alan's like button on his